You are watching the number one podcast in the whole entire YouTube wrestling community, and I'm one of your hosts, Juan. And I'm your other host, Jean-Paul Leck. And together we are... And it's time for NXT uh, Super Tuesday 2! So, it was a pretty good show, I will say. Uh, finally, we got a new NXT champion. And Jean-Paul is so excited because he's the guy that like we both predicted. So, it was good because we did it. Adam Cole didn't deserve the title. He's been the champion for way too long. So, I don't think that like it was it would have been the right decision to do that. Right, Jean-Paul? Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't have been... It wouldn't have made sense because it's like, then why do you even do the whole storyline with Keith Lee? Like, you, you, you know, it was... You got the title at off of adam cole to keep it off him you didn't take it off him just to you know put it right back on him so finn yes. balor was the right choice and but you know speaking of that it you know it was the opening contest and i was like you know i don't know if the, uh, the the layout of the show was good but maybe because they gave them the main event last week and they had another big money match which a lot of people wanted to see you know i thought it was going to be even at takeover that was the match between mercedes martinez and, you know, Ray Ripley. So, I guess they thought that was, you know, let's put that in the main event. But, you know, it was a pretty good episode of NXT. It was. It was, it was a lot of storyline developing. We're going to have two title matches next week also. So, like, of course, they always have to give that because why? They're back on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. So, we go back to, like, see both shows, jump Paul. So, we got to see Dynamite one more time. And yeah, then, well, uh, I mean, that's legit. That, then we can go back to, we can go back to watching some Impact. We, yeah, we, yeah, we can watch some Impact. So, we'll have some, like, developments on Impact. Actually, we didn't see it at all. But, like, as the night goes on, we're going to keep developing. So, jump Paul, right there, like you said, NXT Night 2. You know, family, don't forget to catch on, like, Monday Night Raw Review with jump Paul and myself. Thank you for all the support on that. And also, like, the King, Jerry Lawler. We have like this uh, Broken Skull Sessions episode with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Really interesting interview. But on Monday Night Raw, John Paul, everybody was like saying the same thing that we did. Really boring. The only good stuff is like Mysterio. As a family, the Mysterios beat the crap out of Buddy mm -hmm. Murphy. So that was really cool. And, you know, no more developments, any more storylines, nothing. Just more like oh, the Raw brand is pretty much in chaos because of all the situation with Vince Kennedy McMahon. You know, he's always good. But when he wants to be bad, he's very bad. So thank you so very much, family, for all the support. So Jean Paul, tell me, like, like you said, the layout of the show kind of different because the Prince Finn Balor and Adam Cole opened the show right there. Uh, the so uh, the match quality was really good though. These guys like always like put on good shows. When you mix two great wrestlers, this is what you get. But like Jean Paul, I gotta agree with you on this. The commercials took me out of it a little bit because during the commercial break, like they had like the picture in picture and actually good action was happening during the picture in picture. So I don't like that. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, I complain about that a lot, especially during, you know, NXT. I feel like that's like a big problem is that they the commercials make no sense. We saw like six commercials in the Iron Man match. And then we saw two commercials in this match, and this match wasn't very long. It wasn't short. It wasn't like a six-minute and done. You know, it was a good, like, 20-some minutes, but it was, you know, two commercials, you know, right in the middle of this thing. So that, I agree, you know, because when a commercial comes up, let's all be honest. Even though it's picture-in-picture, picture, do we keep watching? No, that's when you pull out your phones. That's when you go to the bathroom. That's when you go get a drink. And then you're like, oh, okay, drink. done. Yeah, so, I mean, that you know, that kind of sucks because it was a good match. I do like how... You know, it was, oh, let's wear each other down. You know, you try to focus on something. Adam Cole was going after Finn Balor's legs. I forget what was hurt on Adam it Cole. Left, it was the left leg that got injured because it was like, you know, Finn Balor's pretty much his mm -hmm. main thing is like the stomps. You know, yeah. working on that, that's his like main weapon. So like that was cool. I really like that too. Like the action was like really back and forth. I love the backstab. Mm -hmm. And I, I love Cole. I love how they they kicked out of the finishers too. Like they yes, each yes. hit their finisher and they kicked out. And it was like, see, that was the thing. This match, it, if it would have had a lot of like you know build up, like Keith Lee and carrying Cross, that had all the build up. And then you know the end result was kind of crappy. This, oh, yeah. well, this was good end result, but I had zero build up. So like we kind of didn't care because to me. The buildup of, oh, we're the number four, you know, champions and, oh, the the Iron Man match. Now it's just the two of us. To me, that wasn't that good a buildup. That was just like, okay, they need to put a title on somebody. This is how they're doing it. Was it was just to prolong it. You know, that's how I yeah. feel. It was just to, like, give it, like, a main event for, like, the Nefer, you know, the second week. But see, like yeah, you said, Finn Balor kick, uh, kicked out of the a last shot right there. Like, ah, uh, da. That's when you find out that, like, you know, you're not, you know, <laughs> you know you're not going to get what you wanted from a girl. Like, ah, uh, mm -hmm. da. And also, like, uh, 
Adam Cole kicked out of the coup de gras and see, mm -hmm. like, I like how Way Barrett was selling it because, like, oh, nobody has ever kicked out of the coup de gras. And, you know, like, that was cool. So, like, I, I really enjoy this and see, like, the ending of the match was actually even better for me because, of, like, you always said, like, it needs to be, like, a big, big move. If you kicked out of a finisher, and this time I'm going to make my finisher even better, so I got to go to the top rope, and then I'm going to deliver my finisher. So that's what Finn Balor did. And it ended up being, like, a one... Uh, what is it like the 1916 from the yeah, top? Yeah, yeah, kind of just like super an avalanche. Like yeah, yeah. Call, or like John Paul called it avalanche. I call it super. Right there, mm -hmm. boom. Uh, the, you know, really cool move. And I, you know, I, I, I enjoyed this match, like you said. But like, like the best moves were like in the picture in picture because yeah. the belly kick happened right there. The super kick happened there. Oshigo Roshi happened during the picture in picture, and also the fisherman scary that Adam called us. So that's the part of like when I'm like really. Why they give me this, you know, during the picture in picture? You yeah, and, and that's something like the match is taking place. Yeah, and and for the rest of the show, besides the, you know the two, this was like kind of like a a mediocre sandwich, like a classic roast beef, you know, what I mean? but like on a king's Hawaiian roll. The, yeah. so the beginning and the end were really good, and then just everything in the middle was just kind of plain. It was like, eh, you know. But I I would have rather seen the middle of the show loaded up with commercials. Don't have any. Maybe one during this match, I think it would have made it more enjoyable. But at the end of the day, you know, Super 1916, we have a new NXT champion, right Finn Balor. Right so, there. you know, I'm well, like, excited look, look, for what they're going to do. Look at this, Jimbo. Uh, the, mm, there he is. Mm, 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 mm. And then, you know, they had a lot of a backstage stuff also. They were congratulating him. He's like, hey, son, yeah, for you see Fandango, mm -hmm. William Regal. You know, even, Adam Cole, even Adam Cole came up to him. So that kind of oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. solidifies... Well, no way had access face. to backstage, so you know, give me, give me one second. But like, keep telling me, like, you, you you're finally happy that Finn Balor was able to win the NXT Championship. That's why he came back. That was the main reason, right there. And like you said, Adam Cole, right there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they're all friends, you know. Hey, it was legit. It was a, it was a great match. And thank you, you know, the Bullet Club, right there. And Finn mm -hmm. Balor is like, see, ten months ago I came back, and people say, why? Why is that? A, you know, why you demoted yourself? Why I came back for this jump ball? For the NXT mm. Championship. So, I mean, I enjoy this. And I hope that Finn Balor has a really great run. You know, the Prince is finally has goal. You know, we've been waiting. We were, we were taunting about this the whole time. Remember? Oh, you know, why is he not in the main event storyline? Why is he not the champion? Right. And right now, he's finally the champion. So, we're happy. That's mm -hmm. what I got to say on that, jump. Well, I'm very excited for... Yeah, the, the, only, the only thing I just want to say before we move on is I wish he would have won it a little bit more of a legit way. Because this is kind of tainted. Like, and that's how I would have felt with any of those guys. Like, they didn't legit, it wasn't in the plans. They didn't beat Karrion Cross. It wasn't, you know, legit. It was kind of, like, tainted. You know what yeah. I mean? But, I mean, eh, he was, I feel Finn Balor would have been the champion at some point. That's why they put they put the belt on him. Yes, that's true. That's true. So, now let's move on. You know, a great match. Uh, we're excited for Finn Balor. NXT has a great champion, you know. And I, I just, like, I think that, like, this should have been what, like, how the right progression Mm -hmm. Aside of Keith Lee being the champion, it should have been from Cole to Balor, at least for me. So now let's go to Rhea Ripley. She got a promo. She's like, she's going to destroy Mercedes Martinez inside the steel cage. And that's why, you know, you see the cage right there to the left. And also, like, that was supposed to be the main event. Like Jean-Paul said, would you, would you have rather see this as the opening match and then the championship match at the end? Is that what you would have rather now, now, now that the show's over and I'm seeing them, I would have said, yeah, just because it's for a championship. You know, nothing against the women. They beat the hell out of each other. They brutalize themselves, and we'll get into it, but more than some men do in a steel cage match. So, you know, you're, I'm not taking anything away from them, but, like, that wasn't for the women's championship. It wasn't to be a number one contender. You know what I mean? And it's like Ray Ripley versus the Robert Stone brand. That's not a feud people care about. But, like, yeah, and you know, who's going to be the that's, NXT that's champion? Say, yeah. That's going to be a feud. So I, I feel like you could have switched them, but like I said, I feel like... You know, they just, oh, you know, they're really behind Ray Ripley. Okay, you know, you guys, pro this match really should have been on TakeOver or, you know, some, you know, I feel like it should have been sooner because, you know, they're just kind of dragging it out and they're like, all right, we'll give you the main event as a consolation prize. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, not that I think, you know, that you think about it, it's like, to me, the championship always has to be last because it's like yeah. your main prop. You know, that's what we fight for. That's what I created. Oh, yeah, because what, what did you oh. and I say? We said that we thought there was going to be, like, a fuck finish again since it's the opening thing. Yeah. They're going to, like, be storyline and, throughout and the whole like, episode. Yeah, and have, like, another match, you know, as the main event. But, no, actually, they kept it clean. He beat him clean. You know, that was good. Mm -hmm. But now, actually, we got, like, Robert Stone right there. He got to see the tank. You know, we see him. Like, he's also like, oh, that's my kryptonite. I don't mm -hmm. really want to see this again. I'm all like, so, you know. And then we get to see Aaliyah. 
Aliyah is actually running away, and then she starts. Uh, she tries to attack like Shotzi, right? He tries to attack. Oh, Shotzi! Yeah, Shotzi comes up because he is the tank there, and then she's like, "What the hell are you doing?" And then he's like, "Oh no!" And then Aliyah comes, and they're chase, and then she chases Aliyah into Eo, who's getting a photo shoot done, and then oh, no. and then Eo's like, "Get out of here! You know you're bullshit. I'm the champ. Who are you?" And then yeah, and then you know all chaos and then, ensues. And then the action went all the way to the ring, and then we got to see actually. Shotzi and Eo teaming up against the Rover Stone brand. So everybody against Jean Paul, like the Rover Stone brand, is actually becoming that popular or that mm-hmm. great that everybody's feuding against the Rover Stone brand. So like the the one thing I did like is was like the double like action. You know, Eo did the Moon Soul and then uh, Shotzi did her like top. Oh, of the Senton, the, yeah. The Senton. So that was good. See, we have that right there. Uh, the... and, and and this was all to set up because of course at the end of this thing, you know, I didn't even see Eo bring her belt out. I don't even know how that got there. But then you know, Shotzi picks up the belt and is like, uh, the like. Oh, no. yeah, I do. The dude that is right there, Jean Paul. You see that right next to Eo doing the. Oh moves. yeah. So he's the one that like. Oh uh, yeah, he brought it out. But yeah, yeah so like she she out. holds up the belt. You know, Eo kind of gives her a look. Uh, like, the... like, don't even think about it. Like, like you're bullshit. Like you sell pictures of excrement like nobody wants to talk about that like you know like why are you even in the ring with me and it's she's like okay wonderful. she excrement Shitsy? excrement shitsy uh, yeah shitsy black oh, okay yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. but uh, our shitsy black and star, like, look, she, is, shitsy, I think in, the, in that picture she's trying to say yeah. shitsy yeah but um no. yeah so they're gonna have a match next week and i agree with beth phoenix in the sense where you know beth is trying to put the match over and i think that's what they need to do i'm glad this is a non-title match that's the one thing i was like you know, I like Shotzi. She's definitely one of my favorite, you know, young up and coming women. I think she's the future of this, you know, very deep and talented women's roster on NXT. But, you know, I mean, it needs to be a non title. She needs to prove herself. And, you know, if she beats the champ. Yeah, like, but, 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 like, but, but, yeah, but then when we look at uh, some of the matches we'll get to for next week, you know, with Timothy Thatcher and Priest and Imperium and, you know, Brizango, it's like, why, do you, why is that title match? I mean, because, you know, Jean-Paul is why they're back on Wednesday, so they have to... Yeah, but that's what I, I mean. It's like, to me, it's like you hand out random title matches to, like, people who either it's just lost do or don't know, deserve it. for what it is, Le X. Yeah. And talking about, Le, about the... Let's have dinner with the Le X. Yeah, you know, let's, let's, have let's, let's, eat, let's eat. Let's eat. It's, know, either Burger, it's either Burger King or Arby's. Let's that's eat. right. One of the two. Now, that's the only two things in Kutztown, PA, baby. That's mm-hmm. all. And there's no more. So, like, we got to see, actually, a guest. With dinner with the Garganos, we actually get... Tegan, or uh, I think I think it's some Alexis or like something like that, right? Like uh, Knox, Tegan, yeah. Knox, right? That example, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, a good. That's a, that's a good middle name, Alex. Yeah, that's yep. a good middle name. Tegan, Alexis, Knox. Yeah, so like actually, she's gonna have dinner with the Gargano shampoo. and like pretty much is like the dinner is is just to like kind of like uh, reconcile, you know, mend the friendship, like the you know, affirmated men friendship mm-hmm. that they've been like they've been saying that they have, you know, Candice and. You know, and uh, Tegan, so like, yeah, they're and she, to they, they, yeah, yeah they, they, they split this up. She, let's just talk about you know all the segments right here. But yeah, I like how you know at first I'm like, what is Candace turning face? Like, like really? Like already? That was like you know that was kind of bullshit of a few run. Second, but um, no, she's pretty much like, okay, Tegan, you know, you're here. Just admit that you're bullshit and it's all your fault, and then we can, you know get back to being friends and Tegan's like what are you talking about you know this is you blah 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 and I even forget this whole pizza thing where she showed up with the pizza I like they're oh, talking yeah, about this angle like and I'm like Kid I Lee forget and this Kid Lee and Mia Yim that's what it was oh, yeah. oh that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. when they because did that they like, parody the thing yep. yeah. Yeah. but that's, that's what, what I mean they're like and I'm not even going to equate that to how much wrestling we watch. I'm just going to say that it was like a very forgettable, like, like, why do you have heat on her for doing that? But yeah, I mean, then they started a food fight and they started, you know, well, like, you know each other up thing, like they were done. talking right there and they were trying to convince her to join the Gargano way because it's like, yeah. finally, we're going to get gold. I'm going to become the NXT women's champion. So what about you, Tegan? You join us. And you finally learn to be, you know, a winner yeah. rather than to be a loser. And even Johnny goes like, you know what? I'm just gonna leave you both of you by yourselves, you know, so you can mend because it's like you guys are two girls. And right there, you know, Jean Paul. Actually, I see a little bit of salad. I see a little bit of spaghetti. Uh, I, I love the I love the line where when Candace was like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna be champ again," blah blah blah. And then Tegan's like, "Well, you can't even beat Eo. Like yeah. you couldn't beat her before." Yeah. And then she's and like, like, 
She's yeah. like this bitch. She's like about to lose it. And then, but yeah, but like, like I said, Johnny go, or you said Johnny goes upstairs. He's like, I'm gonna go upstairs, whack, play video I games, wanna, like, I get watch done. Girl break, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. So and and see, like I, I don't think Tegan like the the spaghetti look because like, mm, mm-hmm. it's yeah. Like, it's when you go to like a friend's house and they serve you something that you don't like. It's like, oh, it's good, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I, I love, I love. Then obviously, you know. Tegan is the baby face in this, so of course the chaos ensued, the fight, and then when they started throwing shit at each other, I love when Candace, I don't know what she threw at the TV, but she ducked it. Well, like she a, threw something, yeah. yeah it exactly. completely, like, annihilated the TV, and then, like, she leaves, and then Candace is standing there, and then Johnny just looks at the TV, and he's like, no, not the TV. Like, he's yeah. just, like, all upset. I'm like, yeah, I feel his pain. Right there, yeah, look, like, look, like, he threw all the, all the, like, spaghetti right there for poor Gargano, you know, when... And Tegan, like, oh, like you said, like, they were feuding, and, like, I think Candice threw, like, salad at Tegan, and mm-hmm. that's pretty much, like, right there, yep, yeah, see, like, ah, uh, and uh, Tegan pretty much ran away, and, <laughs> and, like you said, Candice, like, broke the TV, and Tegan threw all the spaghetti at Johnny, so that, that was a cool segment, I mean, they started, like, to pump the rivalry, it's interesting, I mean, I think that, like, they need to just, like, have the match, because it's, like, it's getting, like, you know, weird, I mean, not weird, but I should say it's, it's getting, like, you keep prolonging this way too long. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just no, have the I match, agree. and, you know, just have the match, and like, let's move on. That's what I want to say, Jean-Paul. But mm-hmm. now let's go to, like, the Belveteen Dream, Jean-Paul. Let's go to... Mm-hmm. Because the Belveteen Dream actually had, like, had a match with Adonis. That was really quick. Of course, the Belveteen Dream had to win, because, like, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the Belveteen Dream. So he has some kind of, like, stocks in the mm-hmm. WWE NXT. Well, well, I mean, I mean this, and also the match, it, him getting a win wasn't the main focus. The main yes. focus was what happened afterwards. Well, it's because Jean-Paul has been asking for this for the longest time. And uh, Jean-Paul was asking this for over a month, month and a half. It mm-hmm. finally happened. So with a little bit of delay, but it actually happened. So we're actually happy about this. And right there. Eh, eh, the Mr. Back in the Future time, Kushida shows up, but like a different version of Kushida. A Kushida that wants revenge. A Kushida that wants to get like everything that the Velveteen Dream took away from him. Because Kushida should have been in like the, you know, in, in the title match, in the NXT Championship match. But like because of the Velveteen Dream, that didn't happen. In the latter match in NXT TakeOver. So mm-hmm. Kushida comes back and like she actually attacks the Velveteen Dream and she apply, he applies the submission hole. So that was really cool. The armbar. I really loved yeah. it. Yeah. And oh, and, the, and the, co- the commentary was, I mean, not that they were making him heal, but like you look, he's obviously not wearing his normal getup. I like how his shirt still has the numbers on, so it's still like time oriented and stuff. That's kind of cool. But you know, I would be pitched too. You know, pretty much Velveteen Dream is you know screwed him out of opportunities, and like this is all bullshit. So yeah, let him come back and be pissed. I don't think this makes Kushida heal. I think Velveteen's still the heel in this, and I'm fine with this feud. I mean, like. Dream- Dream's not like we always say. He's a he's a good wrestler. Some of his movements and stuff is is a little weird, and you know, and just all, everything in his personal life now, people kind of just hate him. You know, myself included. So it's like, eh, you know. But I was never too high on him to begin with, if I'm being honest. So I think Koshida's got to go over in this feud, and I think this is good for Koshida. I loved oh, yeah. his gimmick and the time splitters and everything before, but you know, changing the gimmick up is going to make people a little bit more interested. Look at like, this, Whoa, look what's at going pressure. on? Look at like, ah, nah, oh, Kushida, Kushida's one of the best wrestlers ever. And, and yeah. I love what Wade Barrett says. He's like, I haven't seen this intensity in Kushida since his time in Japan. Like, I Wade, said, I mean, I, Wade I, Barrett I, I, always I sells. I said a different he, version of Kushida, yeah. yeah he totally sells. Is. Wade Barrett could sell, you know, sand to somebody stranded in the desert. You know what yeah. I mean? He's just so good at getting things over on commentary. Oh, yeah. Like, Wade Barrett is like, he's like, making, like, at least for me, I'm not, you know, uh, missing Maronalo not too much because Wade Barrett is, like, you know, he's a wrestler. No, but I would ra- uh, no, but I mean, that, how great of a team would that be if you have Wade, Beth, and more? Oh, well, yeah, but, legit. you know, like, I guess, uh, you know, Mal Moro is, like, you know, he has all their, all their commitment mm-hmm. and everything, but to me, I'm, like, I'm enjoying this because, like you said, the Wolf Barrett is actually heel at the same time, maybe face, you know, he tells you, like, experiences, I'm really liking this, at least for me, you know, I'm oh, not yeah. being horror too much, so, you know, at least it's for me, you know, mm-hmm. maybe you can, you know, if you miss him a little bit, there you go, Jean-Paul, but at least this is exciting, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward for Kushida with the Belveteen Dream, I'm really, oh, really definitely. looking forward. It's legit. And now, as long as he wins. Something, as long as he wins, yes. Uh, something that is not legit, Jean Paul, is we go to school one more time. It's one a guy that, like, you absolutely love to hate. Oh, I know. We just, no, we just indifferent against, you know, Timothy Thatcher right there. He's, like, actually 
uh, watching videos of uh, Damien Priest. He's talking about yeah, but this, he, you know, the school of uh, Lucha Libre or the school of wrestling. And he's just like, the lesson is know your enemy, Jean Paul. And it's not, you know, like not a record, it's not a band, it's just the title of the class. So it's just know your enemy, Jean Paul. You know, and did you like, enjoy this segment? Or, like, it, this, uh, this, I actually didn't mind as much as the other ones because it wasn't the same. Like the you know the last three or four you know videos that Thatch has had, right? yeah, it was all it was the same thing. This it's a different setting. It looks like they're sitting in his living room and he has the the slideshow like displaying up against his you know the side of his wall. But I yeah. mean, it's a little different setting. It's like oh okay, you know it to me it, it just it's something different to look at. It's the same segment they're trying to get him over. And NXT actually needs more heels. You know, you think about it like, okay, you turned Finn Ballard, he's definite face. You know, you lost Karrion Cross, Adam Cole's face. You don't really have that many heels, so you kind of got to push Thatcher a little bit. He, you know, I, I don't hate him, but he just looks a little bit generic. So I guess yeah. he's been yet to kind of get him a little bit more. Even the man priest said that, like, you know, later in the show, he just said the same thing, generic. Yeah, so, I mean, but I think they'll have a good match. But again, with a match like this, with... Pretty much no build, no nothing. You know, Priest is going to win. So. Uh, hopefully, yeah. So, like, you know, Jean, Jean Paul, you smell something here? Yeah. And it's like, what do you smell? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It smells like gold. And it smells mm -hmm. good. Yeah. See, that's Fandango and Tyler Priest. They're enjoying their run as, like, the NXT Tag Team Champions. I'm enjoying this. These guys deserve a little bit of, you know, recognition. They've been in the WWE for, like, quite a long time. I don't want to say, like, 10 years, but at least uh, seven or eight. And finally, they're getting something on NXT, so I'm happy for them. And then we got to see a, a segment from Imperium. You know, video package is like, oh, we're going to get the gold back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a song that we used to love. I mean, it's tweaked a little bit, but it's fine. But like Jean Paul says in NXT, sometimes you got to hand out tag team, you know, a tag team championship matches out of nowhere. And there you go. Next week, we're going to get, you know, the rematch from the tag team belts, Brisango defending against Imperium. We'll see if they are able to retain, or they were just transitional champions. If, I, I, I would love now. This is. Example. I'm not trying to book this like WCW or like AEW, where everything has to end in a brawl and this and that. But I'd love to see next week. You know, you're going back to Wednesday. It's live. Have Indu Share come out, attack these guys in the middle of this thing, but then not that they get a tag title match, then do Indu Share versus Imperium. They have a match or two, and then whoever comes out from that little mini feud is the number one contender. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's or what I would do. Right. Yeah. Or, I mean, I don't know about that for, like, whatever, you know, for a tag team title match. Is but, he loves it. But, he loves I, mean, it. I mean, do something, because it's like, we just saw these guys lose, so what are you going to do? Like, we said there's no rematch thing, but this isn't technically a rematch, but it's still like, yet they had the match. Now they're facing the exact same team. So it's pretty much a rematch. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? so don't like, don't try yeah. to be like, there's no rematch clause. And then you book a rematch and it's like, so, mm -hmm. so I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I like, like, we're going to so give the match to Yeah, the like, what are you going to yeah. do? I mean, you're going to have Walter come out. You got, they have to do something to make this exciting. Cause uh, unless you're going to just bury Imperium. Oh yeah. Which, which yeah. I mean, if that's what they're going to, I'd rather have Imperium lose. You know, yeah. I don't want Breeze Angle to lose, but I'd rather just see a fuck finish where some team comes out, you know, especially a new tag team or something yes. to add, you know, some spice in the tag team division. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. See. Yeah. We'll see what happens, like you said, but now let's go to something really quick, Jumbo. Bronson Reed going against Austin Theory. Who thought that, like, Bronson Reed was going to win? Everybody. I mean, if you thought that Austin Theory was going to win, you absolutely don't understand anything about professional wrestling because Bronson Reed is the guy that they're pushing. He got a really great showing on NXT TakeOver. And he was actually, oh, when he won, he was actually, like, doing, like, the title, like, kind of, like, the tone. So, he's like, oh, I'm going to get gold pretty soon. This match was actually quick, but to the point. And I like how Austin Theory was trying to do his finisher. But uh, Bronson Reed is that heavy that he couldn't do it. And he actually ended up falling. And then he hit a sent on. And then the splash. And done. Right, jump Paul? Yeah, I mean, Bronson Reed, they're going to push him. You know, Austin Theory, he's lucky that he's still even employed. There he's a hell of an athlete, but he's very young, very immature. Wade Barrett said they signed him when he was 20. He's 22 years old now, so he's still very young, very immature, in my opinion, especially with all the backstage and personal life stuff we know he does. Especially so, with chicks. Yeah, exactly. So he's going to do he's gonna do a couple jobs. He's going to get his ass beat. I'm sure Bronson Reed laid in a little thick with some of the stuff. You know, no pun intended, but... No, that's good, and he needs a win. I'd like to see him. If anybody's going to be Damian Priest at some point, you know, why not Bronson Reed? Because I'd rather see that than like a Roderick Strong or somebody who we've seen there before. Give Absolutely. it to the new guys. 
Absolutely, Jean Paul. So now we have like a little bit of promo, really, really quick from Adam Cole. He's saying that you know, so I lost, but next time, you know, the outcome will be different. You know, Adam uh, Finn Balor is legit. You know, I have tons of respect for him. You know, in this today, he ends up being the winner. It's fine. Next time, you know, I'm when the outcome will be different, and it's going to be undisputed. And he just leaves. You know, you can see he's mm -hmm. a little bit sad. So I mean, that was good that like you, you know, Finn Balor gets the recognition that he deserves. So I really like that. Now, Jean-Paul, let's go to Mercedes Martinez. I really like this promo by her. I really like this. You know, it says when lions want to be kings, they don't go to the weak. They go to, like, the biggest or strongest lions. So I like like that, you know, and, like, the oh, yeah. place, no better place. Like, she's good. I like, you know, what they're doing with Mercedes Martinez. She's a veteran. She deserves this. So I'm really happy for, like, what they're doing with her. At least that's my take on that, Jean-Paul. Oh, no, I feel 100% the same way. You know, she's a veteran for how many years? She knows how to cut a promo, knows how to wrestle. She has the facials, the intensity. You know, every everything's legit. You know, she's not like some of those, like, that look like a deer in the headlights. So I was excited for this match, you know, and... You know, I think Mercedes Martinez, there's a, she has a bright future, even though she is a veteran. I think they can do a lot with her. Absolutely, Jean-Paul. Now, let's go on the Spirit Era. Roderick Strong, he's going to face, you know, a guy that only lost how to lose. How to lose. You know, he forgot how well, to win. Well, I don't know about that, but we'll see. Killian Dane, you know, like done. You know, like he goes against Killian Dane. Like, did you like this? I mean, the match was good. But like Killian Dane, now, again, you know, like he's a guy that like is, at least for me, completely misused. He had a lot of future for me, you know, like uh, Insanity was good. Of course, goes to the main roster, gets unnoticed. The only the good thing that he did in the main roster was marry Nikki Cross. That's it. But now, yeah, but I mean, gets the win on this. Yeah, you tell me, you're going to counter. Let's do so I'm like, yeah. I don't I don't get that. So I'm like, you know, I don't, you know, maybe there's going to be a split between them. But yeah, Killian and Dane, I mean, I think he should have won this thing. You could have, you know, at least gave him a little boost because you saw when Roderick Strong was trying to use Bobby Fish to get involved. Like, oh, yeah, you know, because even Wade was like, oh, with friends like that, who needs enemies? You know, so it's like you could have caused some little dissension there. The Undisputed Era could have been going back and forth. Killing and Dean gets the win, but no, you know, Roderick Strong, okay. You know, you know, like I said, they, they're pushing them, but like, let's push some new guys here. Yeah. And, and then we try to see the tag team, you know, formation of uh, right Killing and Dane and. Yeah, Drake Maverick. and Drake, Drake Maverick, Maverick, but like, does anybody care about that? Because Killian Dane just pretty much threw him down at the end of the thing, too, so it's like, okay. Oh, yeah, like, that. he actually beat him up, you know, yeah. actually, and the Drake Maverick tried to help him out, just like, legit, let's be friends, let's try to be, a, you know, a team here, maybe we can win tag team goal or something, no, no, he actually beat him up, and that's the only thing that he did, and then <laughs> Killian Dane is like, oh, I don't want to, like, do that, I don't want to have any friends, or at least I don't want you as my friend, so, I mean... I don't, I think what I don't I think know what this is going to be honest. Yeah, I think they're going to draw this out, and I think this is going to... They're eventually going to be a tag team. I think they're going to be like a Heath Slater and a Rhino 2.0, because it's like we don't know what to do with these guys, so we'll just put them in a team. Like, we can't not use Maverick, because we just signed him, and it was that we pretty much built the whole cruiserweight, you know, tournament thing kind of around him as well. So it's like, so, you know, we yeah. got to do something with him, so... We'll see. I'm, I'm not too excited about this, but we'll see where it goes. We'll see what they do, you know, and now we get, like, Jean Paul, let's go to, like, of course, like a promo from Damien Priest. Like, they ask him, hey, you're going to have a championship match. They, they reveal that they're going to have a championship match, you know, next week, and he's going to be facing Timothy Thatcher. And that's when he said, you know, Jean Paul is like, oh my God, the guy is, like, so ugly. So I'm going to do him a favor and I'm going to make him more ugly. And he said, you know, all I need to do is, like, because he's, like, teaching people how to, like, beat me or, like, checking my strategies, my. You know, the way I wrestle is like, I'm going to just have to do a, a few kicks, a few punches, and the end result is going to be me beating him up. He's like, no, 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 you know, jump on all legit, all road break legitness, in all seriousness, you know, uh, there's no way that I can lose in my first title defense. You know, and if you want to join in the after party, you're completely welcome. So I really like the shirt. Yeah, and I, and I love when he walked away. She was thinking about it. That's the yeah, thing. She was like, like mm, okay. Maybe. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. So good stuff. Like, I, I like Damien Priest. You know, I don't think he's going to lose. You know, it's no. way too early for that. So, you know, that was going to happen, Jean Paul. Like you said, next week, a non title match. Io mm -hmm. going against Chelsea Blacker. We'll see what happens. Two baby faces. Like you said, maybe we'll get like a little bit of Ray Rapley right there. Maybe Dakota Kai coming back with Raquel Gonzalez. We'll see what happens in this, you know, situation, Jean Paul. But now. Let's go, Mr. Legge. You allow me? Let's go to the main event. Yes. Rhea Ripley going against Mercedes Martinez inside a steel cage. What do you think about this? This match was good for me. Very yeah, good. this was good, and they gave him a lot of time. I don't, I didn't take notice, really, because, I mean, I, I was into it, but was there, would they have one commercial? 
Only no, one commercial break. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it was just the one commercial. And like I said, you know, I wish you could have done that with the main event as well. I feel like it really kept you invested in this thing. You know, right when it started, Mercedes yeah, Martinez, yeah. she came out with the kendo stick. She's throwing all the chairs, everything into the ring. You know, then uh, this is what I really like too. No music for Rhea Ripley. She just came out, attacked Martinez, threw her in there. You know, threw the table in there as well. So they had all the toys, shut the door, and then, you know, the chaos began. Right and there, both yeah. of the women looked even. I was I was hoping that the, uh, Mercedes Martinez, because I knew she was going to lose. If Ray Ripley would have lost this, then that would have been huge. That would have been like, what That's are they doing? Because, because then Rhea has been booked pretty badly since losing to Charlotte, I would say. If she would have yeah. lost this, this is her first major win, I would say, you know, since WrestleMania. So that was good for her, and you knew she was going to win. Yes, but no. I would have liked to see it would have been a lot of heat on, you know, Martinez. Like, oh, let me just beat down Rhea for a majority of this match. Then Rhea makes the comeback. But it was pretty even. It was like, oh, okay, Rhea gets some offense. Then Martinez. Then back, forth, back, forth. But, I mean, good spots. You know, like the suplex off the top. You know, and then just throwing Martinez. Overstone got, like, I yeah. also, like, involved on that. So, that was good, too. I, yeah, I liked it. Like, the match was good. The only thing I don't like is, like, why you have to add, like, the pinfall? I just don't like that. If it is a steel cage, keep it like somebody needs to come out of the cage. I and, 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 and see, I, I like that too because I feel it could have been something where, yeah, I mean, you know, they wanted to do the huge table spot. You know when they had the table in there and it was getting, okay, what time is it? 9.57. Oh, okay, the table's set up and they're on the cor they're on the turnbuckle. Okay, here comes the table spot. Uh, but it's a, you knew it was coming, but I agree. Rhea could have escaped from the cage. I, you know, as I'm watching this match, I thought actually Martinez was going to escape when uh, Tony Khan got involved. I mean, uh, Robert Stone got involved, yeah. and then uh, you know he got head butted and everything else. And then I actually thought he was going to get thrown into the ring from the top. I thought that would have been legit. Jeff Hardy would have been proud of that bump, but yeah. no, we didn't see nothing like that. And I actually thought Martinez was going to win. She didn't. And I was hoping just Rhea or somebody would have just, like you said, walked out of the cage because then the other person would have looked strong or at least stronger even in losing. Because you get pinned in a steel cage, it's like you're, you're, that's like it's over. It's done. It's done. I mean, like they feel like you said, like, and I really like what Wade Barrett said is like, oh, you know, like, oh, there's been like this big struggle of like steel cage and the human flesh. And as mm -hmm. far as I know, the steel cage has always won. Yeah, so that's, that's what I mean. He's I legit. Was, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he could sell sunglasses to a blind man. Yeah, I mean, it's legit. You know, sunglasses are chased to Jean Paul. That's exactly. Legit. Yeah, yeah, it was legit. And I have a big, you know, big rib tied and, and through the table, Rhea Rapley mm -hmm. gets the win. Like you said, Rhea needs to like get like more momentum. And that's what they're going to do. I think that like the few money, few, you said it from the beginning, Io Shirai against Rhea. That's what they're going to be. Hopefully, Rhea doesn't become champion again. I don't want to see that. I'm happy with you. It all, it, it all depends what they want to do because that's like, you know, you get called up to the main roster, you're done. Triple H might be like, Ooh, I don't know. I kind of want Rhea to be on my roster for a while. So we're going to keep her down here. And, and maybe the same thing with Io. Maybe they play a little bit of hot potato with the title, kind of like Shayna, you know, Kyrie, Ember Moon, all those. Like they kind of played hot potato for a little bit. So who knows what they'll do. But yeah, I mean, Ray Ripley needed the win, unfortunately. I think so did Mercedes Martinez because she's kind of new. That would have been a good win for her, but maybe they'll do something with her yeah, since she's still in the Robert Stone Robert brand. Stone brand is still like I think is not completely dead. You know, yeah. they still have Aaliyah. They can still use Mercedes as like you said, the powerhouse, like the the the, the strong woman right there. So it's not mm -hmm. bad. You know, Brittany Andrea gets the win, and that sums it up. The family. It was a great show. We have a brand new, like we said, NXT champion in Finn Balor. That's exciting. Brand new things are happening, or we're looking forward to Priest and Timothy Thatcher next week for the North American Championship, and also like Imperium against like Reese Sango. Nothing from Legado de Fantasma, no Cruiser Waits mentioned in this show. So that's interesting because that, that kind of forced people to watch 205 Live because that's when actually they show up and everything. So, Jean Paul, remind everybody where they can find us in the social media world. Well, you can find us on uh, Facebook on Rope Break. You can find us on Twitter, the OG Rope Break, Instagram, the original Rope Break, and right here on YouTube for the best podcast in the YouTube wrestling community, the original Rope Break. That's right, Jean Paul. And you and me have a day, no, not a day, but we were going to be meeting one more time tomorrow for AW Dynamite, the fallout of all out, all out, all out. All out. So, like, you know, it's redundant, but it's one is going to happen. So, you know, family, be with us for that. You know, thank you for like supporting us on NXT. Tuesday to Super Tuesday. So, Jean Paul, there's one more thing that is left to say, and that is. Uh, 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 uh,